Hey y'all, this is AL Thick Madame and I am recording live from the car. Yeah, y'all, I'm about to actually go inside. I'm at the house. Just got off work a few minutes ago and um yeah, like I said, I'm about to go in the house. I am about to wash my hair and get ready because I have somewhere to be in a few hours. I have people that I stay in contact with and um the same people that I stay in contact with in contact with they stay in contact with other people that I used to associate with when I was at the job that I don't talk to really that much unless it's a hey every now and again on social media but yeah so what it is is a birthday gathering that's what I like to call it and it's just gonna be it's usually like a nice amount of us from my old job that you know we all get together for this one particular person's birthday um this time sometimes we do my friend and sometimes we do other people who i'm cool with but today is for somebody that i was cool with at work and we worked in the same area and he was really really cool and um even though he is like on the level of an associate he's very observant and he's just all around a nice person to the point of where even though like i was saying we're not all you know all like that but he would notice when anybody wasn't being themselves like he was like very very observant even when you would try to hide it so you know he actually was just really nice he's caring and he would help people that were in need there have been people who I knew didn't have money for food and he would just go in his pocket and just hand them money without expecting to get anything back. Like, he's just really cool. So we're going to celebrate him. That's why I only deal with a select few people because everybody's not real. You know what I'm saying? And this person, he keeps everybody laughing. He keeps everybody, you know, hype. Even when you don't want to be hype, he finds a way to just have energy. And it's like, sir, you're doing the most. So, yeah. That's what I'm doing, going to this birthday gathering later. So, um, I'm going to talk to y'all for a few more minutes before I, uh, you know, retire to <laughs> the area that I'm going to go to wherever I decide in order to go wash my hair and get ready. I don't even know what I'm going to wear yet, y'all. So, anyway, I am going to go inside and, um, when I come back, y'all will see what I'm wearing today, which is a part of what I want to consider to be one of the shirts that I'm wearing for Black History Month. So anyway, I'll see y'all in a second. Hey, y'all. I'm back. So, <sighs> I'm about to get ready for this birthday gathering. But before I do, I just wanted to come and check on y'all, see how y'all doing. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. It's raining here. But <clears throat> I love rain and it didn't discourage me. I had a wonderful day at work today. And I'm glad about it because at first I didn't know how that was going to go. But, you know, I will. <laughs> so, just wanted to let y'all know that I am going to be putting out more content. And... I don't know. I might spend a few minutes actually within this video um, with a story time. So I'm still mulling it over why I'm even speaking at this moment because it was really heavy when it happened. And even though I mentioned it before, I'm pretty sure I never went over the details. So, yeah. <sighs> okay, y'all. So... Again, just in case I didn't really showcase my shirt, it says 100% brown sugar. And every time y'all see this, like all wrinkled up and just look all a mess, y'all, like I told y'all before, I just um, make sure I hinge my um, keys right here. It just out of habit, like without even thinking because of things that have happened in the past. <laughs> So, yeah, that's what I do. So, I guess I'm going to do this story time real quick. 
Oh, y'all. Okay. So, remember in earlier videos, like some of the first ones I put out, one of the videos, I talked about how I had been raped twice in my life. I told y'all details about the first time, which was when I was nine years old. But I didn't really say much about, you know, any of the details when I was 18, almost 19 years old. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm trying to make this quick because, like I said, I got to get ready for this uh, birthday dinner later. And I want to be in good spirits then. <sighs> Y'all, I'm sorry. It's just my heart is beating so fast just even thinking about this okay <sighs> okay so as i've mentioned before i've never been like scared when i would do the online stuff so i would meet people all the time online whether i actually would end up meeting them in person or i would just talk to them online and was cool with them like that so one day i met this guy and um I, online and he was talking, you know, like he was really, really nice. He seemed really cool. Okay. Okay. I'm back. I got really anxious and nauseous, so I had to stop and regroup. I had to take me a little swig of some black bear ginger ale. I hate normal ginger ale. So, anyway, I met the guy. And it was either college club or on tagged. I'm uh, pretty sure it was probably college club because when this rape happened, it was earlier on when I first started college. It was in like my first real semester, my first full semester. So yeah, it was the fall of 2002. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so keep in mind at this time, it was like midterm finals and, um, what I do so I don't overthink things, I take breaks and I'll just watch shows or I'll get online and talk to people. So, you know what I'm saying? That's what I would do for my breaks. So I would take a break from studying and that's what I did. So that particular day, that's what I did. I got on there and, you know, he instant messaged, instant messaged me and we were talking. Everything seemed cool. Y'all, so, you know, eventually he was like, you know, I think it'd be cool. We met. I was like, oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? I told him the situation as far as how I'm studying. And I was just taking a break, which I'd already told him before he even said anything about meeting up. So, you know, I was like, you know, remember I told you that I was taking a break. But, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to study a little bit more and then we can meet up or whatever. Cool. So, dude doesn't have a vehicle. You know, I'm young. And, you know, my thing is, I, I, I've i always been a type where I'm not going to sit up here and be like, oh, you ain't got no car. I can't, you know, even say hey to you. Now, there are people who are really like that. And I'm, I wasn't even looking at this guy trying to be in any type of relationship, trying to have sex or anything. I strictly was like, hey, he seems cool. We can hang out for a little while, take my mind off of studying. So it's not so heavy on me because when I really get in study mode, I can, there is a such thing as overstudying. And you can sabotage yourself. So, for me, I just wanted to make it light. And I was like, okay, cool. I'll come to where you are. He gave me his address. I went over to where he was. It was one of the projects in Montgomery, Alabama. In Montgomery, Alabama. And I don't remember which one, but it was crazy to me because I'd known of all of them, right? But I'm guessing the one that he lived in... It was a back way that you could go in, but I'd never gone that way before. And so I was like, okay. Now, you know, I followed the directions. At that time, I had Alltel, which, you know, now it merged with Verizon and it's all Verizon now. Cool. I had Alltel and at the time I was paying $10 a month for my uh, navigation and all that stuff. So I didn't, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm paying for this. That's fine. I'll put in the address and do what I got to do. Cool. So got there, picked him up and my plan before I ever even said anything to him, before I saw him online, any of that was to rent a room, get a room, uh, at one of the little lower class hotels because 
the Celtics were going to play. They were playing. I, I was really, really, really into basketball back then. And at that time, the Celtics were the people who I was rooting for, lived for the Celtics. You know what I'm saying? Of course, I've been a Bulls fan. I loved the 76ers. You know what I'm saying? I love Allen. Anything dealing with Allen, Allen Iverson, John Starks. You know, just saying. So that was my plan because when I was living at home at the time, we didn't have cable. And I think that particular game, it was going to be on TBS or TBN. Okay, my bad, y'all. So I got a phone call. Every time I'm trying to do stuff, especially when I'm trying to be on time for something and then I decide to do a video, that's when everybody called, text, and all that. So I got a phone call that I could not ignore. So yeah, I am um, back. So anyway, um, my main purpose was to get the room so that one of the times that I take a break, it would be during the time when the basketball game was on. So I was just going to get that. And the reason why I, I was saying earlier that I had gotten a room is because I lived with my parents and... We didn't have cable or satellite, anything like that at all. And in my mind, I was just like, oh, well, you know, just in case I need to run to the library or whatever, one of the little hotels that I was going to, it was not too far from the library. It might have been 10 minutes tops, if that. So I was just like, you know, if I need to make a run or if I need to get something to eat, like everything that I was going to need was, you know, really, really close and right there. So in my mind, I'm just like, oh, okay, let me get this room, whatever, whatever. And like I said, I'd already planned on doing that before the guy ever came into the picture. So, you know, I told him that that was what my plan was. He was like, oh, okay, it's cool. He was like, okay, well, so, you know, I can watch the game with you. And, you know, I won't bother you while you, whenever you decide that you want to start studying on and off. And then, like, whenever you're, you know, in between studying, then we can, you know, continue to get one, get to know one another. So I'm like, okay, cool. That's fine with me. So y'all, <clears throat> I go pick him up. Like I said, you know, dude was not a bad looking dude. You know what I'm saying? Because he's one of those people who would get online, but he didn't have a picture, which again, I don't care because I'm not looking for anything. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, as long as you're nice, as long as you're cool, as long as you're not a killer, you know, I, I don't care. So, we are going to the place. Everything still seems fine. Ain't no red flags. Sitting right next to me in the passenger side. I literally have no red flags. There is no fear deep down in my soul, in my bones, nothing. Okay, so I get the room. I get the room and then we go in there. Y'all, it was literally like a light switch clicked on in his mind. And I'm just looking like, where this person come from? Y'all, so literally as soon as I go in the room, I was like, ah, yeah, let me let me turn this TV on. Y'all, the door hadn't even closed yet. Hadn't even closed the door behind me. And he was talking about, yeah, so, you know, you know, I'm trying to do something. And I was just looking at him like, I don't know you. Like, what do you mean you're trying to do? Like, he was talking crazy to me. So, you know, I was just like, um, we ain't here for that, y'all. So I'm literally trying to play off the fact that he just tried me and he didn't try to roll up inappropriately when I had already established what my intentions were when we were talking online. So, you know, instead of showing fear, I proceeded to just go on. I just like, oh, let me turn the TV on, y'all. First channel I get to, for some reason, Spongebob is on. I remember that like it was, I don't know why. I remember that like it was yesterday. <sighs> so, y'all couldn't even get past that channel. He didn't took the remote. And he was like, you know, we don't need to be watching on TV. You know, I can, you know, basically trying to make it seem like having sex with him would be more entertaining than watching anything on TV. So, I'm just looking at him like, I am in school. My focus is my schoolwork. And the purpose of me turning this TV on is for me to 
be able to watch things in between the times that I'm not studying, which I'd already told you. Y'all, this dude did not want to hear nothing that I was saying to him. He proceeded to, like I said, he took the remote control from me. So I was just like, okay. Y'all, and I mean, I had my books in my hand and everything. Like, that's the dumb part. Like, I literally, everything that I told him I wanted to do, that's what I was doing. I had my books in my hand. I brought them in the room with me. All that. Because I really had, like, my thing is, if I'm sitting up here and I'm really having a moment where I'm, I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to make him think that I'm, you know, just here to study. But, you know, we're going to do some things. Like, I never gave him any kind of a hint that I was into anything else, like nothing. I didn't have no kind of provocative clothes on. I didn't sit up here and try to like do this or, you know, do anything. I didn't raise up. I ain't, you know, scoot over on him. I didn't try to sit on him. I ain't try to rub up against him with my booty while I was opening the door, like nothing. There was no indication that I was on board with having any type of sex or anything inappropriate, no kind of making out, no nothing. Y'all, so tell me why dude was just still like, what we finna do is have sex. Like, that's basically, he, he just kept saying, he was just like saying stuff to me. And I'm just like, why is he not understanding that sex ain't finna happen? Y'all, next thing I know, it's like he got tired of me telling him that nothing is going to happen. And then he pushed me on the bed. So, y'all, I'm still not trying to show any signs of weakness. He done pushed me on the bed. Now, I'm big. I'm bigger than him at this point. Or if we were the same weight, the way he wore it was differently because he was taller than me. I'm 5'3". So, I'm th he's smaller than me. You know what I'm saying? But he was still taller than me. And he's a man. So, I mean, he done shoved me down on the bed, y'all. And I'm just like, I can't believe him. You know what I'm saying? I done told him no. Y'all, he, he like comes over on top of me. He's hovering over me at this point. And I'm telling him, like, no. Like, what are you doing? Like, I'm seriously just talking to him normally. Like, what are you doing? And he was like, you know what I'm doing. I was like, no, I don't know what you're doing. Y'all, he was tired of me. He started ripping my clothes off. Like, he really was, like, peeling my clothes off of me. And I'm just looking like, no. You know, and the whole time, I'm just saying to him, like, stop. You need to stop. Y'all talking to a brick wall. <sighs> so it got to a point where he, I mean, I'm fighting him this whole time, mind you. Cause I'm just like, I know you're not trying to take my clothes off. Y'all. Then it got to the point where I'm just like, this is really happening. This dude is really ignoring me and just doing what he want to do. Y'all. He got to where he was pulling off my pants and then he proceeded to like pull my panties off and all that. And like I said, fighting him the whole time. Like we're like pushing and shoving one another, y'all. I don't know why I said this. I'm pretty sure it was extreme fear, nervousness, anxiousness, and everything else in the world. That fear of the unknown mustered up in me decided to blurt out I was like I don't want to get pregnant and I don't know why I said that. I was like I don't want to get pregnant I don't want to get any diseases no and he actually had one hand still like holding my wrist down and he reached in his pocket and pulled out a condom so he ended up straddling me with his legs, his thighs and stuff over me. And so then he freed both of his hands, you know, both of his hands were free to actually open the condom up and put it on. So I'm looking at him like, no, I don't want this. Like, what are you, I'm still saying, what are you doing this whole time, right? 
Y'all, I'm fighting him the whole time. All while he's trying to enter me, I'm fighting him. Like, I really got so tired. When I tell you, I was just fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting. And I really thought that he was going to get the hint and stop. But he never did. Y'all, I fought. I kept wrestling with him and tussling with him. And he just never stopped. And we literally tussled. Like, if I had to guess an amount of time, it had to have been like 20, 30 minutes. And the only reason why... I'm guessing that is because, like I said before, Spongebob was on the TV when I came in. I saw the time when I came in or whatever. Well, before I came in. And, like, that whole show came on and went off and another episode had started. So, at least 20 minutes had passed. And I'm fighting with him. Y'all, I just... It became harder and harder to fight him off because it's like it's like it, it just felt like he was getting stronger and I was getting weaker and I was getting so fatigued and it just got to the point where there was nothing else that I could do. He forced himself on me and raped me. Y'all, it's like my mind went back to when I got raped as a child. And it's like, I'm saying to myself, I can't believe this is happening to me again. Except this time, I'm an adult and I actually know for sure what's happening. When I was a child, I didn't know what was happening, but I felt I had an inherent instinct that it was something that was not supposed to be happening so he eventually finished he got up off of me so this is the sick part y'all know I brought him so he done buttoned up his clothes and all that stuff and I'm just literally like laying there paralyzed and he was like when you gonna take me home? You gonna stay here a little longer? Like he just then picked up the remote control and was flipping through the channels, and I'm just sitting there like, what? You just raped me. But your question is, are we gonna stay here a little longer and spend the you know rest of the night here, or you know what are we gonna do next? And it's just like, what you mean? What are we gonna do next? Like I was so. Y'all, I just could not, I did not, I did not understand. It's just like, what am I doing? What, what, what did I give off to you to make you think that it was okay to rape me? What did I say to you? What key words were given that said, please rape me? I, like, I don't understand. Y'all... I was just like, oh, I'm going to take you home. And I tried to get myself together and pull my clothes up, put all my clothes back on that he had peeled off of me and gathered up my books. And I left out of that hotel room and gave the key back to the hotel owner. And proceeded to drive him home. So it was quiet on the way there. And then we, we got into his the neighborhood, if you want to say, that when we're nearing where he lives, he was like, you know, I enjoyed myself. And he was talking about, you know, he wanted to meet up with me again. And I'm just looking at him. 
like, have you lost your cotton picking mind? Like, I'm still in utter shock that you've done this to me. And now I'm taking you home. And I've dropped him off. Y'all tell me why I dropped him off, right? He had the nerve to ask me if I wanted to come inside and meet his family. What do you mean? What do you mean? I regret the fact that I even met you. So you're going to sit up here and ask me, do I want to come inside and meet your family? What is wrong with, like, something has to be wrong. You have to have some kind of mental disability for you to ask me, do I want to come inside and meet your family? I had to tell him, like, nah. And it took everything in me just to say that because I couldn't even speak for the longest because I was just so overwhelmed with shock and awe that this even happened. So it's like, what do you mean? What do you really mean? Like, I can't believe you asked me that. Y'all, so he eventually got out of the car. And then he was like, all right, I'll see you next time. Y'all, as soon as that door closed, I sped off. And he had those uh, speed bumps. Y'all, I almost tore up the bottom of my car going over there. I didn't slow down. I did not care if I told Y'all, I sped out of there over the speed bumps. Like, that's how, how, how much fear came over me. And it's like, he wasn't even in my presence anymore. And I was just like, I got to get away. I got to get away. I got to get away. He might come back over here. He might do it again. And I'm just like, I got to get away from him. So I literally sped out of there, almost tore my car, almost tore all the bottom of my car out riding as fast as I could to get away from him. <sighs> oh, God, y'all. And yeah, he did have the audacity to send me a message even after all of that and tried to talk to me like everything was normal and I politely blocked and ignored him. It's like... I don't understand what people go through in their minds who think it's fine to rape someone. I never told you that I was going to have sex with you or that I was even thinking of having sex. But in your mind, you felt like it was fine to sexually assault me. You raped me. You know what I'm saying? And... In all honesty, that along with the first rape and the molestation that set that set a lot of stuff in motion that I ended up engaging in, allowing myself to be a part of, all of the above, because I just felt like men did not value me. Apparently, there was something wrong with me because when people see me, they just want to rape me or they only see me as a sex object. So, for a while, I actually believed in my heart of hearts that I was on this earth to be a sex object for men and like I really believe that it's like that has to be what this is like I really convinced myself that that's what it has to be because anytime anybody approached me anytime anybody wanted to say anything or wanted to have any dealings with me the topic was always sex that was it there was nothing about hey how you doing what are you into you know what I'm saying? Oh, you in school. What you in school for? Like nothing. No normal, what I would consider to be normal conversation. Nobody really was trying to get to know me. Like for real. Like everything was just, I'm trying to do something. So I really did start believing that 
my purpose in life and all women's purpose in life must be to be here to just be a sex slave for men. And I really did believe that. I believe that for like almost two years. And I was in school and I couldn't focus and my grades started slipping a little bit. And it was just a lot because I was still dealing with the fact that that happened to me. And how vulnerable I made myself somehow because look what happened to me yet again. So it got to a point that when any male would say anything to me, even if it was, hey, how you doing? I don't want to hear nothing. You, I don't want to hear nothing you got to say to me. I don't, I'm... I'm living by. I don't, I don't want to hear nothing. I'm talking about it could be some of the nicest people, some of the sweetest guys. When I tell you they would say something to me, they would say good morning. Um, maybe it is, maybe it ain't. Like I, I would instantly have an attitude with any male who would say hey by anything to me who wasn't related to me that I was cool with. That I anybody who had already relate established a relationship with, a friendship or whatever. If it wasn't them, which is a small circle of people, then I was not trying to hear nothing you said. I literally would be like, I don't know what you're talking about. Or I would ignore you. Or I would look at you and just look straight through you or look at you like, how dare you even speak to me? Like, I really would look like I would have a whole attitude on my face because in my mind, I'm just like, all y'all are trash. And I mean, that's no way to think, but it was just so many things that happened to me that that was the only thought process that I had for like two years. And I had to, I had to be shown and uh, allow myself to reboot and understand that all men are not like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't even understand what allowed me to to get to that point because my father is an amazing man. He is an example of the type of man that I have always wanted to have in my life because of how well he treats my mother. And it has nothing to do with material things because like I told y'all before, we grew up and we was going through it. Even though he was a state worker, all the money that he was getting was going on us. And bills and all the necessities. And he was still the working poor. So. But y'all. It was just so much. And I did not want to date anybody. I did not want to talk to anybody. I did not want to do anything. Even though I was attracted to men. I just did not want any dealings with them. Like that's how bad it scarred me. So, yeah, y'all, I got to go because this is, <laughs> I don't want to start crying again. But anyway, let me go get ready for this uh, birthday dinner. I will see y'all later. Y'all have a good day. Happy Friday. Y'all have a good weekend. Be safe out there. Bye.